Hi, I'm Matt Patterson with The Oklahoman, and we're back with another edition of Zoo Tales. I'm joined by Rebecca Snyder and Andrea Brenner from the Oklahoma City Zoo and also Muppet. Yep. And <laughs> Rebecca, she's here because you guys have a project coming up, and it's called what? Talk, talk a little bit about the, it's a bird project. Yes, we are participating in the Great Backyard Bird Count for the first time this year. We're really excited about it. It's going to be one of our... Uh, public awareness events to kick off the year and this is an exciting event because it's actually a big global citizen science project so people can uh, join in the count it's very simple you can look it up online there are very simple instructions to follow there and essentially you just go out anywhere your backyard the zoo uh, park and you count birds for at least 15 minutes and the bird count dates are from February 16th to the 19th. And if you count birds for 15 minutes any time during those four days, you can put that information into this global database that is used by scientists from around the world to track a lot of really important information on birds. And it's not just one species, it's, it's whatever bird you see. Any right? bird you see, you try to identify the species and they have resources on the website to help you do that if you're not an experienced birder. And uh, you try to count or estimate the number of individuals of each species that you see. Why is it important to count birds? Well, because bird, a lot of Native bird populations are actually in decline for a variety of reasons, but um, many birds are not doing very well. And so this is important. It, it launched about 20 years ago in 1998 is when they started the first one. And so there are a number of bird experts and scientists who use that data to look at, for example, how are changes in weather patterns or climate change affecting bird populations, what's going on with migratory patterns. Um, how are birds responding to diseases like West Nile and various regions? So those kinds of questions can be asked based on this uh, on this data from these counts that are done every year. And again, that's uh, Saturday and Monday. Yes. Correct? So at the zoo, we are going to be doing the event on Saturday, February seventeenth, and Monday, February nineteenth, and. We have a variety of activities going on at the zoo that day. One of them is if you come to the zoo, come to the front gate at 11 o'clock, we'll sign you up to participate in the, in the backyard bird count, tell you all about that, lend you some binoculars. You can go out with some of our staff. And then we also have one of the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation's biologists, Mark Howery, who is a um, great ornithologist. He's going to lead um, the count one day. So you'll go out, you'll learn how to look for birds, how to identify species, and we'll actually be doing the count and entering the data then so people can learn about that. And then we've got activities for kids where they can do kind of a mini version of, they can go on the, on the walk around the zoo one or they can do a mini kid version of it. And we have these great bird search cards so they can actually look for birds that are in the zoo's you know, um, exhibits and record those. If they turn those cards in completed, then they get a bird prize for that. <laughs> so we've got a lot of fun stuff going on those days. And Muppet is... Muppet, Muppet has already been counted, right? He, so he's, yes. tell, tell us a little bit about him. Or her, uh, so her, yeah, so her. Uh, so this is Muppet, she's called a tawny frogmouth. And you know, when people look at her, the first thing that they typically think is that she's an owl. She's not, she's a totally different type of bird. Uh, they're with a lot of groups called like night jars, um, tawny frogmouths, a bunch of different types. But as you can tell, she does look kind of similar to an owl because they both have that nice coloration that makes them look like bark. So what she's doing right now is she's pretending to be a stick. So that's what they're going to do in the wild. They have two different responses um, to the world around them. So one, they'll pull all their feathers in, they'll tip their head up, um, and usually kind of close their eyes a lot to pretend to be a stick. Um, if that's not working, what they're going to do is pretty much do the complete opposite. They'll puff up their feathers, open their beak really wide, and stare at you and hope that you go away. And that's kind of how she got her name, right? It's, it's yeah, so they have their mouth is very, very large. Yeah. So they're called frog mouths for a reason. Um, and then she also got her name Muppet for that same very reason. Uh, so they're not native. They are from Australia, but they are a good example of why birds are really important. So out in the wild, they're going to be eating a lot of insects, a lot of invertebrates like spiders and scorpions and centipedes. So they help to kind of keep a lot of those, what are typically considered pest animals, um, down. Yeah, she's, she's kind of checking she's everything out. Relaxed right mm -hmm. now. <laughs> She's kind of checking everything out. What are their numbers like? Are they endangered or just in general in the, in the wall? Uh, they're considered least concern, which just means that they're pretty much doing fine as well as population counts can determine. They're found pretty much anywhere that you can find trees, including uh, populated areas. So they're pretty okay being around people. They just don't like deserts and really heavy rainforest. But anywhere with trees, um, you can find them. Yeah. One, because they need it to act like a stick. 
They'll also hunt from it, so they'll sit in the trees um, until they see any of their prey species on the ground. Then they'll swoop down and pick them up with that big mouth. And then they also nest in trees. Huh. Know, she's looking around. Really. Yeah, I mean, you can is. see she looks exactly uh, like Bark, so mm -hmm. she yeah. would blend in very And she's well. just a year old. You mentioned a year old. This mm -hmm. is her first trip away from the, the zoo. Yep, this is her first trip, so that's why she's kind of checking everything out. It's a little bit new to her. But yep, she is less than a year old. They can live up to about 14 as normal in the wild, so we should have her for a good long while. But she's one of our newer education animals. So we do have a pair of tawny frog mouths out in the zoo that people can see, or if they do any of our education programs, they can come and see her specifically. And what's the reaction generally? People. people well, this pretty... is uh, she's pretty new, so she's not started going to any okay. of our things um, yet. But she should be doing our programs very soon. Speaking of programs, Rebecca, we've talked. I've written a little bit about Roundup for conservation and, and some trips you guys have taken. Twenty eight. We're obviously into twenty eighteen. Talk about just some of some of the projects that's, that that's money is going to be used for this year. Yeah, so each year we identify what we call our major initiatives that we're going to dedicate Roundup money toward. And this year we're supporting a project that we also supported in 2017 called Painted Dog Research Trust. And so that is a conservation organization that specifically studies painted dogs and protects them. And um, it's based in Zimbabwe. And one nice feature of that project is that we are able to spend, send two staff people from the zoo to work um, with the scientists who run that project in Zimbabwe for two weeks. So we sent two people in November of last year to do that, and we are planning to send two people again this year. So that's exciting for them and a nice um, connection between that project. So that's one of the projects we'll support. And then the second one is a new one for us, and that's International Rhino Foundation. Uh, so that foundation or conservation organization, as the name indicates, focuses only on rhinos. Um, we are specifically supporting one of their projects that focuses on Indian rhinos because that's the species of rhino that we currently have at the Oklahoma City Zoo. And they will be moving from their current exhibit to the new Sanctuary Asia exhibit that's under construction but is opening in June of this year. So we're excited about that. And because there's going to be a lot of attention around the new exhibit opening, it seemed like a really good time to uh, do some more communication about the plight of rhinos in the wild and what the zoo is doing to try to help them. How long has the IRF been around? It's, it's they have been around for many years. They are one of the most um, recognized rhino um, conservation organizations. And um, the zoo has sort of indirectly helped support that organization through something that's run by the a local chapter of the American Association of Zookeepers. Um, so they do this event called Bowling for Rhinos every year, and it's a big fundraising campaign. And some of the money that that um, group uh, generates goes to International Rhino Foundation, and some of it goes to some other groups as well. Well, what's, uh, do Indian rhinos face kind of the same prospects as African rhinos and yeah. habitat loss, poaching, yeah. et cetera? How, yes, yeah, so poaching is a huge problem for rhinos and they are poached for their horn, which in some cultures is really valuable. Um, it's used um, in traditional medicine. It's also used um, for some status symbol, basically, like dagger handles and things like that in different cultures. So the, rhi the horn is extremely valuable in those cultures, and that's the main reason that rhinos are, they're all protected, but they're illegally hunted or poached for the horn. Habitat loss has also been a big problem for a lot of rhinos, and that is the case for Indian rhinos. Um, so this um, International Rhino Foundation, there's currently a pretty healthy and well-reproducing population in one national park in India, but that uh, population is vulnerable because all these rhinos are concentrated in one place and there's not a lot of space for them to expand that population. So this project is translocating rhinos. So they anesthetize rhinos and then move them to other protected areas to try to um, establish breeding populations in other areas. So it's a big, big project. <laughs> yeah, two, two really great projects and I hope Whoever goes this year actually gets to see some dogs. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know it, it, it's tough. I mean, they're they're hard to mm -hmm. find, and that's Absolutely. one of the reasons they're endangered. I mean, that's that's part of uh, the story of, of painted dogs. But before uh, Andrea's hand wears works out, <laughs> we'll, we'll sign off. You uh, build up some muscle. Yeah. With little animals and just I, hold them for. I bet you do. One more time. The bird count is Saturday and Monday at the zoo from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Yes, Correct. exactly. Yeah. So right. we hope people will come us. join us. It's going to be a lot of fun. We Definitely. have a lot of cool birds around the zoo, <laughs> wild and in our collection. Right. Yes. Well, Andrea and Rebecca and Muppet, thanks for coming in today. Thanks for having me. Thank you.